It started pretty early 2020. We actually had something very, very similar kind of scoped out. So the thing that we have now and have launched uh, was basically conceptualized in early 2020 when through just my own interest in wanting to, you know, I love the concept of a metaverse. Like I wanted, you know, to, to experience that myself, to be able to just kind of hop in and you, you know, they describe uh, the kind of one of the core visions of the metaverse with, you know, it's snow crash and, and all of that, where they describe, you know, a, a big, dense virtual city. So I was, you know, hearing more and more about the, you know, th that just sounded like a really cool thing that I wanted to exist. So I kind of was exploring and seeing what was out there. Hey there. If you're new here, I'm the Metaverse Explorer and I provide you with the most up-to-date Solana-specific content and alpha to increase the size of your portfolio. All totally free. All you gotta do is click that little bell and that little icon. I get my sources from three different places. The Grape Solana Discord channel, join us, have a chat to me. The Solana Grapevine, a daily newsletter providing the best source of information regarding new protocols, rewards, it's a group of passionate people that carefully curate new announcements, new projects to discover and actionable intel for you to experience yourself. You can get the link to this down below. And of course, the Solana Foundation and the ecosystem. Let's get to this episode. Hello everyone watching at home and in the Discord as well. This is the Metaverse Explorer on stage on the Grape Protocol Discord. We're talking to Gomez at the moment and he's the co-founder of the Portals platform on Solana at the moment. So Portals is a place in the Metaverse where you can come and have your own NFTs uh, listed. Uh, you can have them in your own room. You can create your own room and have your own space in the Metaverse, which is pretty cool. And I haven't seen this being done uh, very often around in the Metaverse. So we have Gomez here and he's going to talk a little bit about us uh, a little bit <laughs> to us about the, uh, the the platform that he's building and his experience and we'll talk about Solana a little bit uh, this is a uh, introductory kind of uh, interview AMA so we're going to find out a lot uh, inf of information about portals itself if you have any questions feel free to type it in the live question section Gomez how are you going mate thanks for coming good good long day but uh doing well thank you for having me yeah, no problems. And uh, in the Discord chat here, I'm going to link the website for you, their Twitter, and we're looking at it now and you can see a little guy uh, playing, uh, kind of organizing his own room. Uh, so, uh, Gomez, uh, so talk to us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how did you get into crypto and uh, what? Uh, how, what's the whole process of you coming and making this new platform on Solana? Definitely. So I got into crypto kind of casually 2013, um, but didn't really start seeing the kind of the potential of it you know as a as a yeah, uh, super computer that is accessible and really started seeing a lot of the opportunities with interoperability um more recently so that was more 2020 but i was kind of before that like a lot of people a lot of people in tech as well kind of skeptical about crypto and it's you know it's utility but i definitely believe in it fully now after kind of just you know diving into that world more recently and uh seeing all the all the potential so um i'm mostly kind of coming from a gaming background i've been in the gaming space for about 15 years um damn sort of the intersection between games and business and marketing so uh kind of got my start uh yeah, about 15 years ago, kind of doing agency work for video game companies. You did early work with like the, the early Riot Games team, right when they were getting League of Legends kind of off the ground. Uh, just building uh, web experiences and games and that sort of thing. So almost all web focused um, and video game marketing focused. So. Uh, but yeah, definitely have been gaming since for as long as I could remember, and that kind of what drove me to to get into the space. So, learned how to code and got into web, and really that kind of opened the door to just like the wider world of business. And that was sort of the the, but that was the the beginning. Of that was just kind of the interest in gaming. So, 
Um, that's awesome to have yeah, like that kind of much of little... experience. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Like that's awesome to have that that uh, experience behind you and bringing all of that kind of knowledge and expertise and skills onto Solana and making your own product here and now you know winning an award for this. That's an incredible story. Um. So so how how then did you actually get into like Solana and making what decided uh, what made you decide to bring out portals? What was the inspiration? Yeah. So. It started pretty early 2020. We actually had something very, very similar, kind of scoped out. So the thing that we have now and have launched uh, was basically conceptualized in early 2020 when through just my own interest and in wanting to, you know, I love the concept of a metaverse. Like I wanted, you know, to, to experience that myself, to be able to just kind of hop in and you, you know, they describe uh the kind of one of the core visions of the metaverse with you know it's snow crash and and all of that where they describe you know a, a big dense virtual city so i was you know hearing more and more about the you know th that just sounded like a really cool thing that i wanted to exist so i kind of was exploring and seeing what was out there i think decentraland wasn't quite out yet or maybe it was just coming out i think early 2020 yeah um and you know i kind of tried everything i was a big believer in that would be a really cool experience wanted to see that wanted to experience it so tried everything you know second life was much older than than that but it's kind of niche kind of uh for a very particular audience cult and following second life cult following yeah yeah and you know but i was trying i was trying the new iteration of second life with sanzar and just kind of trying a little bit of everything that was out there and didn't really see anything that was uh something that i would want to play something that i would really want to get into and it was like well, you know how why hasn't anyone done a you know why isn't there this dense virtual city that you can hop into and it feels like you're you know, getting off a train in Tokyo or something where you just, you know, there's hundreds of things to do. You want to get out and, and explore and click on everything. And, and you know, there's people around and all of that. So um, most of, you know, the metaverse, uh, as people imagine it, was kind of very VR focused. Um, and we've, you know, me and my team, we've, you know, before, before kind of really diving into this, we had a software agency that we started in 2015. Um, but we really were just kind of surveying and seeing that that really was something that was emerging. There wasn't really, so we basically were thinking about a, uh, you know, what would the building blocks need to be to kind of get there, to get to that, to that point and saw as kind of, you know, people that look at the whole field and try to kind of predict where things are going and saw, you know, VR is still quite a ways away. It's obviously accelerating. It's obviously going to be a really big thing, but we wanted to see, like, couldn't you do this now? Like, just looking at our skill set and kind of where we come from, very much, you know, lots, long, long history building kind of high-end kind of uh, experiences in the browser. So the agency that we started in 2015 was doing, you know, WebGL, AR, VR experiences for a lot of these companies. So we were building things for Marvel and kind of continued to work with a lot of video game companies and essentially saw that VR was kind of a ways away. Yeah. How come you couldn't do something where right in the browser, there's, you know, your space, right? And, and another thing that we kind of saw happening uh, that was uh, encouraging, it was like uh, seeing that there kind of was a much more mass market uh, you know, people weren't looking at it as a metaverse, but of similar ish to a metaverse experience through Animal Crossing, actually, where people were uh, arranging their spaces yep. and wanting to visit other people's cities. And that's a very kind of, you know, mass market thing. It's a game, you know, that's super polished. It's, you know, Nintendo makes, makes amazing, amazing games and products. So uh, that was kind of a, a cool thing to see that that, that was like, okay, couldn't you do something that was just that uh, you know appealed to a broader audience that, that type those types of experiences appeal to to us as gamers right not so much the hardcore niche like second life type stuff so that was that was a little bit of a you know inspiration for couldn't you do that in the browser and um and you know just send a link to somebody to your space where you have your cool decked out office or whatever it is but you know imagine something that's super polished and really cool so 
those were the things that we were kind of thinking about as as building blocks. Um, we ended up not pursuing it early 2020 because it was you know it was really ambitious, and our team is kind of typically bootstrappers. We want to uh, you know in the bootstrapping space when you're kind of building a, bu- a business from the ground up and not raising money or anything like that. You typically uh, go you know business to business. You that's generally where it's a lot easier to to get something off the ground if you're doing something that's going to you know appeal to a huge audience you need to spend lots of money on marketing and so um we basically put it back on the shelf but uh we were in this phase where the agency had kind of been automated and we were we had like a year pretty much to explore different business ideas and you know they were more bootstrappable type businesses but the thing that just kept calling me back no matter what no matter what uh product we tried to work on it was like there really is an opening for something like this like the metaverse in this way that's kind of you know more accessible in the browser no friction you know just hit a button and you're in this really cool experience yeah so and again we were kind of seeing everything else that was out there we were kind of watching decentraland and uh how that wasn't necessarily leading you know they still they've raised a ton of money and that could still be a thing where they get to that point where there's yeah so and i think part of that was we were looking at just how the incentive systems were set up where it's you know it was very crypto first it was um you know sell a bunch of land and a lot of speculators bought that land but there weren't really incentives necessarily for people to build on that land so as a user uh trying to hop in you know not a great first time experience it's very empty and you know so we're very very much like user player first uh in how we're thinking about things and so crypto or not we want to make an awesome experience and uh what we did see was that you know there's new ways to kind of fund projects fund projects through through crypto and love you know uh lots of elements of crypto where there's you know community ownership and yep. the interoperability is awesome for like a metaverse project so more and more things were making sense um in the crypto space so that's why again we kind of just saw everything else that was out there you know i considered joining some of the other projects like i saw mozilla and mozilla hubs and what they were building and you know we saw what facebook was doing was like could we maybe work at one of those companies and you know try to make something like this happen that is more accessible but again we just kind of said you know it doesn't seem like they're on the right track we ended up really just being pulled by this initial idea and in early 2020 we started we said let's just go for it let's start building it um another thing i don't know i'm talking a lot about kind of the the business and go to market strategy stuff which may not be that interesting but that's okay um we we did see uh another platform if you've heard of uh heard of it called gather Gather gather.town that was one it's kind of it's not really gaming it's not really metaversey at first glance but it's kind of it looks more like pokemon it's kind of like a 2d in browser thing and sort of similar like if you can imagine what we're doing but imagine it 2d um and they really did get off the ground with kind of a bootstrap you know they were making a lot of money right out the gate with conferences so it's essentially you can like walk up to somebody in this uh this platform and if you're close enough to them they can hear you they can talk to you uh it does have video chat and all these other things but that was actually a way that they were they had the technology to kind of do conferences for example so during covid especially uh they were they were just doing tons and tons of business you know people just for the utility of being able to run a virtual event that you know you couldn't do in person at the time uh there were a ton of people using it so that was actually going to be how we tried to go to market initially so we built all kinds of features that would let you support you know 500 people in a single space uh to do like a conference right um so when we were building in 20 or yeah early this year uh that was how we were initially thinking of doing it but it was gonna that was a strategy that was a means to an end we thought okay maybe that could bring some money in and then you get to uh you could now that you have kind of an audience and cash flow you can do the metaverse you can do a virtual city kind of using that same technology but it, but again it was kind of you know that would have been a means to an end sort of strategy doing business to business didn't sound very fun um so again we saw what was happening with crypto and how you could kind of fund things in new yep. ways build as you go uh, 
build as you go. Yeah. Community ownership, all of that. So that is sort of what, and so, and we had been watching Solana since early 2021 as well as like, okay, uh, again, kind of just looking at a market in general, uh, seeing that, you know, more and more people are being brought into crypto every day. There's regular people that, you know, aren't in it just for speculation or DeFi or some of the more hardcore crypto stuff. Uh, they're, they're curious about it. They're, you know, they're, they are getting more and more interested in NFTs and just more accessible ways of using it. Um, and there really wasn't, uh, and you know, there's still a ways to go, but in terms of something that's easy for people to use, you know, no fees, uh, Solana definitely was standing out. And so actually the hackathon before this one, we were actually considering, uh, submitting what we had in the, in the, uh, in the Solana hackathon just before this, but we decided against it. Uh, and then right actually, as we were kind of debating, you know, should we, should we reach out to Solana? Should we reach out to Metaplex, uh, for a grant or something like that? Because we were just getting bored of, you know, do right. we have to do B2B? Do we have to reach out, you know, and do it this way? But we really want to just go straight to the metaverse. We want to do this cool. This is the original vision. This is the thing that was really exciting. So uh, as we were debating that, they announced the hackathon like the next day. And we're like, let's do it. Let's do the hackathon. Um, and yeah, so ba basically we didn't have any crypto integration until then. Yeah. And just started to kind of, you know, do all the research and get into Solana and, or at least like, technical research to get into you know in integrate with it um and it just looked like a really good opportunity there wasn't you know there we have this really cool product that we've been working on for a while and there wasn't really uh, a metaverse like this so uh and there wasn't anything on solana so we said okay let's let's do this and see what happens so um, you chose so you chose solana mainly because you saw it was like starting to uh, become a bustling like ecosystem of people coming across starting to build it had easy onboarding processes for uh, kind of retail investors to come and experience this and of course like lower transaction fees and from the from the development point of view was it an easy integration into solana like you know mostly uh, people just go straight to ethereum because that's where a lot of the uh business is Right, right. And Ethereum is easier, um, you know, and part of it is kind of just strategically there was there wasn't a metaverse platform on Solana. We were looking at it just from the whole big picture from, you know, a user experience standpoint and even seeing things like Phantom uh, uh, and the wallet on Solana being better experiences than MetaMask, for example, just less complicated, more user friendly. It looks like, you know, Phantom looks like something that apple might have built you know it's very yeah, very high sleek. quality and, very and it's user experience yeah so those are all things that we saw and said you know we what we're building we want to kind of have uh be for the users be for players mass market appeal um so if there's a wallet if there's an ecosystem where it seems like that is something that's really important to people you know the solana ecosystem definitely exhibits that so so that was that was part of the part of the decision yeah but in terms of in terms of like technical implementation it is harder it appears uh we I, we've done kind of a few things on on ethereum before that but uh the general consensus seems to be that it is harder to do things on solana that's one of the trade-offs for uh uh the added speed and and you know security that you get with it um the way i see it but i think the way i yeah. see it because it's harder we get a lot less copycat protocols a lot less uh, people are just coming to build something quickly and get out we have actual people who are serious about their products and want to actually build something that's the way I right, see it. right 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 for sure yeah yeah um, so, so that, that all kind of came into the equation yeah 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 so um so about the actual product of the portals platform at the moment i have it up online now uh talk to us about what we can actually do in this uh uh, uh kind of metaverse that you're trying to create here Cool, cool. Yeah. So, so it's just the demo, but basically, you know, kind of what I said before in terms of one of the things that we're really trying to drive towards is density. You know, we want, uh, and, and so that's why we're not selling land kind of spread out over a large area. It's starting with one building and yeah. we want that building to be awesome, cool. right? So, it's be bustling just, ecosystem with people all across it everywhere you go. For sure, for sure. That's that's the goal. So, uh, as far as the demo right now, these are kind of all. Uh, it's all geared towards making it really easy to build spaces. Um, so, besides just kind of like laying out furniture and 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 doing all that, 
um, you can, and, and this isn't super highlighted yet. It's kind of a clunky user experience still. Um, but uh, essentially, you know, you do have the power to, when you lay out items in your room, um, you can give them interactivity. You can make them, you know, pop up a website or pop up an image or, uh, you know, you can embed a website inside of it. So if you wanted to lay out, somebody was asking earlier today, I think on Discord about, oh, it's cool, you, you know, the, the Pac-Man arcade. Uh, people could, in you know, in have their own games. Very soon they could, yeah, they could add a bunch of different arcade machines and embed whatever games they want. And that could be their space if that's how they want to, you know, set it up. So lots of different things that you can do with interactivity and um, so it's like uh, in, in of, a sense it's similar to Decentraland in that sense like people have their own rooms like all their parcels of uh, plots of land and they can create their own experiences create their own games on it and you know people can come and gamble in your room you can have a gambling kind of casino mm-hmm, room is, is that mm-hmm. that's the possible that's what you're looking at yeah yeah definitely definitely and I think one of the things that we're we're doing that's really important to the experience is that it's it's really easy to do that inside of right inside of the experience you could do it in multiplayer so we're going beyond just like a lot of the stuff uh isn't fully implemented yet but uh you know in roblox for example you can and so like that's one of the ways that we describe try to describe it in a nutshell where it's like kind of animal crossing meets roblox meets sim city um but uh in roblox you can kind of build you know, uh, obstacle courses or kind of more more advanced games, and we want people to be able to do that in kind of the easiest way possible. Um, in that, so similar to Minecraft, you know, that's that's probably a, a, a good example of a game that uh, lets people build um, right inside of multiplayer, right? So people get together and they build. So we have that kind of right right built into the core experience. So if you wanted to build a dungeon crawler you could actually do it in multiplayer in the same interface we think that's a really cool uh differentiator uh, where you know sandbox decentraland uh roblox you do have to download a whole other application you have to kind of learn how to build for it and it's really you know it's a it's not easy to do so ours we're trying to kind of go more towards something like minecraft where right in the same interface you can kind of build inside of the experience so that's kind of the the longer term thing we are building all those tools out uh there is kind of like an early system that we have in place where you can lay out um walls and floors and you can you can kind of build a dungeon type experience like a dungeon crawler if you wanted to you would be able to the same way that you drag items into your area uh you can drag out enemies for example and you know down the, this is down the line but you know be able to attack the enemies and and all that stuff so uh that's going to be possible in the future um, and that's all with an eye towards making it, you know, super, super easy for people to create cool experiences so that we can highlight these experiences in, in the central area, right? So, so to get to that point where there is tons of cool content, um, we want to make it really easy to, to build that. Uh, so yeah, so, so that's one, one of the other things in the demos. You can kind of see you have your space that you can lay out, but there's also like a demo hacker room uh, that gives an example of the types of experiences that people can build right inside of portals. So, yeah, I, that's uh, sort of we're trying, we're trying to do the two things. Yeah, I, I have it on the screen at the moment, and I've uh, put on my own artwork on the on the uh, side of there, and I've got a table with my computer, and I can play a game on it, perhaps. Um, and I can actually, uh, uh, what you were saying before, it brings to my mind, you know, there's so many applications to this that people could do, like, uh, for example, the dungeon crawling or like a puzzle room, for example. And I think you guys have something going at the moment, isn't there? Like finding the, the bronze key. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Can, so kind of t- like Ready Player One style. Yeah, yeah. Do you mind so, telling us a bit more about that? For sure, yeah. So when we, when we launched, we didn't get the full... Uh, bronze key hunt uh, experience built out but we've been working on it this month and that's actually rolling out uh, tomorrow morning I don't know what time that is UTC that's uh, 6 p.m. UTC Um, where and again we're also trying to really build you know a robust community and reward people that are putting in time to build cool spaces or even just participate in 
in these challenges so that it's not just people that are buying up land that that get to participate it's anybody that's that's you know kind of putting in work and contributing and you know tackling the challenges and really wants to get in and play and experience cool cool things so um what we're doing with the with the full bronze key hunt that's starting tomorrow is uh it's again it's another example of the types of experiences that you'll be able to build right inside of portals and you know drag your items out uh create levels you know give items interactivity and it is kind of more um escape room-esque right now the kind of the preview but you'll get to see more of what is possible in terms of uh the, the the more advanced kind of level building that you'll be able to do once 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 people kind of really really get into it so that starts tomorrow um and yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that goes because only the first 100 people that complete it will get bronze keys which will you know if you're holding the bronze keys will airdrop you a uh a portals nft which is also launching soon but uh, the nft will uh be your you know you're getting a space that is yours as long as you hold that nft inside of the uh the first building the building yeah which you know so that building is going to be kind of a very central oh, important part of what we do yeah and so that's that yeah that those spaces should be really valuable long term and yeah so and we're giving a ton of those yeah a hundred of those away just people that are completing the the bronze key hunt so and for people uh, that yeah. might be interested how do they actually uh, get started into the bronze key hunt like, what's the inroad uh so when we start it tomorrow we're actually updating the home page and it'll just be right on the right on the home page awesome. so it'll be bronze awesome. key hunt you click that and then you're in awesome okay um so i guess that leads us into uh your nft access card so uh, tell us about why uh, uh, this access card uh, concept came into mind. Why we need to, why we need it, and uh, why is it important? Cool. Yes. Yeah. So it's also it's an access card that basically is going to give you early access to the downtown. And um, if people are you know following our Discord and Twitter, we're also going to be making some some pretty awesome announcements as to like what we're populating the downtown with. Uh, so just anything, from an early anything access you perspective, can share? anything you can share, not, right not now? yet, not yet, but oh. Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there should be some really, really cool announcements that we're making. Um, but so beyond just the early access and kind of access to the private community of people that are supporting the project and, and will basically, you know, have a real, real voice in, in shaping this and kind of building the metaverse. We want this to be, you know, a community owned project. Um, but you're also getting, you know, a space inside of this building and, you know, you can turn it into uh, a gallery. Uh, and, and so this, this NFT will give you, you know, ownership over that space. Where in the demo, it's kind of just place your stuff around. Um, you send a link to your room, and you could do this in the demo now. You could send a link to other people and hang out, and people are using it for virtual offices, just yep. to, you know, just kind of as a proof of concept. But um, yeah, with the NFT, you'll you'll own that space, so you can send a link out you can link to it on twitter for example and have it be you know your full nft gallery you can have things link out to other places um so it could be it could be a gallery you could turn it into an escape room if you want um you could have it be just your cool private office you could flex your nfts whatever you want it whatever you want it to be and it's and it's your space so people are talking to us about um even turning them into stores for e-commerce and, yeah. and that sort of thing all there's that all of that is definitely possible there's heaps mm -hmm, of applications mm -hmm. i can see here yeah what and, about the uh, uh the minting of this uh, nft uh is there a sole price where we'll be able to mint it uh tomorrow almost certainly we're going to be announcing the the supply and the mint price um but the mint will be on friday so that's uh 1 p.m pst and 9 p.m. UTC, but yeah, that's the 26th. Awesome, and that'll be done natively on the uh, um, uh, Portals website, or are you going through another kind of um, like Magic Eden, like NFT marketplace, that sort of stuff? Uh, we're doing it on the on the Portals website. We've awesome. kind of brought in yeah some of the some of the people that have helped build Magic Eden, and and yeah, so 
uh, not builds Magic Eden, but yeah, have, have worked with Magic Eden and, and Radium and some of these other platforms. So, awesome. so yeah. Awesome, cool, cool, cool. I wonder if anyone in the uh, audience has any questions for our guest here, Gomez. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, nothing yet. No problems. No problems. Um, so I guess we'll move on then. Uh, we've talked a little bit about yourself. We've talked about you know the Portals website, and I have it up here. It's pretty cool. Uh, I quite like it. Uh, if, if you talk to us about downtown, so we know each person can have their own room and their own kind of uh, experience within this uh, metaverse. What's what's downtown going to look like? So we're still we're still building it. Um, we're starting to build the storefronts and commercial spaces with uh, some partners, and so th that's basically yeah. We're going to be making some of those announcements this week. Um, and essentially, the other thing that I, that will be rolling out soon is beyond just you know having your own space in the building, you'll be able to you know leave the building and kind of explore and check out other people's spaces as well. So that'll be that'll be really cool. And then um, with the building tools that we're doing and the you know additional contests that we're going to continue to do, we want to you know make it so that people are submitting really cool really cool spaces and those are going to get highlighted and kind of you know put a spotlight on kind of front and center in the downtown as well so uh it's going to be a mix of experiences that we're creating you know we're going to do more of these kind of key hunt experiences um lots and lots and lots of stuff to come so uh we'll be yeah we'll be making those announcements and showing it but just imagine you know we're, we're definitely building towards this experience where yeah it does we do want it to feel like you're getting off a train in a you know dense awesome city and there's you know hundreds of things to do just on on like one city block so uh so that's that's the goal and we're definitely seeing a ton of super cool um signs that we're headed in the right direction with that so uh we've done just put it out there as a as a contest to say you know make a cool room make a cool creative space and and submit it and you'll get you'll get a portals nft um and i think it was something like 10 15 percent of the whole discord uh audience submitted rooms oh, nice and, and and people were spending hours creating really awesome creative spaces um just to give you an example someone did like a uh, satoshi's tavern bar and recorded a whole thing like a conversation of somebody kind of walking into the bar and because you know it's multiplayer and it has chat you know the chat bubbles pop up um and you know there's bartender and and this is just using the very 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 limited item set that yeah. we have it's just one item set basically so you know we plan to have thousands of item sets like like animal crossing or you know any any other other type of type of game like that and, and so, other people will be able to create their own item sets and create their own assets similar to like sandbox for say oh yeah yeah definitely definitely oh, so awesome. yeah we're still working out some of those you know economics and those systems but uh that's definitely on the roadmap right awesome um and that's and that's pretty cool that people can just come in and create their own spaces uh with their own assets and have their own experiences and uh which brings me to one of my next questions is how can you explain to us how you guys actually monetize this system so first you will be uh, uh minting nfts and of course you do get funding from that but what's the monetization model for you guys to actually keep this system perpetually running yeah, so there's there there's a lot. I think it's really just a matter of prioritizing. We do want to do things a little bit differently than than some of the other platforms where there is kind of a, a you know a, a gameplay loop um, yep. where similar to Animal Crossing, like one of the very simple parts of that gameplay loop is like you're just kind of logging in every day to see what new items are available and uh you know there's new things to explore and check out every day sort of thing so that's one one way um and one of the things that we want to just you know really build into this as as uh as a platform that's just really entertaining and kind of gets you once you gets you coming back every day um so that's one way whether there's you know premium item sets or just activities that you can do um there there's a lot there um just in that in that one thing so one of the other things would be um you know building out a whole economy around giving 
uh, NFTs and virtual space and, you know, goods that are valuable to people that are contributing. Um, and, you know, that, that is a, that is another, another piece of the economy. There's, you know, there is a real estate component that's part of the monetization, right? Um, like taxes, lots, there'll lots be a, stuff. I assume, sorry to interrupt you, I assume there will be a marketplace for people who create these assets that look really cool and they want to sell it and then they sell it to the next buyer. And of course you guys have a marketplace with a t percentage of tax, this sort of thing. For sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, beyond that, you know, there's, you could do, we want to be able to facilitate trading and transactions right on the platform as well. So, you know, one of the first things we were hearing from people was, you know, oh, it'd be cool, you know, they're sending links to to their friends and everybody's kind of putting their NFTs on the wall and comparing. It's like, you want to be able to trade and transact right right in the, in the world as well. Uh, that's definitely something that, that can be done. Um, uh, one of the things that there's a ton of interest and in, we're talking to most of the of the big Solana communities and uh, is just kind of you know we're we're kind of creating infrastructure with this platform to facilitate tons of cool experiences for the Solana communities that are out there. Yeah. So if you want to do a special mint or something like that, and you know, it's easy, it takes, you know, it could take 20 minutes to build a maze or an obstacle course or something like that, where everybody in the, com in that community, you know, you could have thousands of people basically playing this game that, you know, the first 50 people to get to the end, get the NFT or get the right to mint it or whatever it is. Um, and, and, you know, creating custom spaces for some of those communities is definitely something that we're talking about as well, uh, to just hang out and play games and, and do whatever it is for those specific communities kind of with, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the type of environment that they want. Um, and then, yeah, so there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that we're still figuring out. On the economic side, that was something that um, we knew when we launched we were going to need to get some help with. So luckily, uh, the you know with the hackathon submission and this space being very active when it comes to investors, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's there's yeah tons of people reaching out wanting to kind of help on the tokenomic side. So a lot of the a lot of the people that designed the economic systems for like Axie Infinity and the people that funded and kind of built out the economic systems for star atlas we're getting kind of all those people in the mix to to you know make this as as cool as it can be um because yeah that's those things can be complicated and they're really really important to get right for maximizing you know the we want to make sure that there is a great gameplay and user experience while yeah. you yeah, need to have you a need utility to really have you mm -hmm. need to have a utility for the token first otherwise when it comes out there's nothing to do with it you know it doesn't perform well people don't see the need and you know your, your overall project doesn't function well um for but sure, um sure. but speaking of economic and tokenomics that you did mention uh, i'm going to be a douchebag and say when token <laughs> yeah definitely uh that's going to be in the in the future we don't have any concrete plans on that yet but again you know we're talking to to those those teams where that's kind of the their main expertise and just again ensuring that it that the core product and the core gameplay experience are uh boosted by that yep. and they don't you know suffer from a from a poorly designed economic system yep nothing worse than a really bad tokenomic schedule and like uh bad utility uh for the token it just makes me cringe sometimes like oh why is this here it's not needed get away yeah. Uh, yeah. uh yes sure so um i wonder if you have anything to share with the community at the moment what's the next iteration of portal so you guys will be doing your nft mint you have your find find the bronze key uh announcement coming soon we're minting your uh uh, uh i forget the uh, the card the am i saying it right the card the uh yeah yeah yeah, the card to remember yeah. your metadata for your room. What's the what's the next iteration and the timeline of things in the next month? What what uh, what kind of announcement should we expect portals will be having? And how soon can can I invite people to my escape room? What's that looking like? Uh, I mean, if you get the NFT, you'll be able to do that pretty much right away. Uh, um, we're trying to roll out the. Um, you know, the ability to, you know, leave your room and explore the halls and check out other people's spaces soon after, as soon as possible. Um, you'll start to see some of the announcements about the commercial spaces that will 
also double as like event spaces almost for like concerts and and some just really cool really cool events that uh i can't reveal too much about yet but um yeah there's that's all kind of coming in the next month or two so a lot of super exciting things so i definitely think we are you know it, this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg but yeah. we you know like like i mentioned want to build a a really just very user experience player focused cool virtual city where there's you know a ton, tons and tons of things to do so whenever you this do, is just when, the beginning. whenever you do mention that it makes me think of the uh, the one of the opening scenes from uh, ready player one where he first gets on his uh, vr set and he goes into it and then you can see everything happening all around him it's a giant metaverse have you seen ready player one? Oh yeah oh yeah definitely definitely yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool, and uh, that's what I—that's what I think of every time you do say that. We have a—we uh, do have a uh, community question here from Copycat. Uh, what components of the that portal system or the portal platform is much harder to make or build than what people actually think? Uh, example: the animation or the coding. Uh, you know, I'm linking it the interface to the wallet. What, what's what's been one of the hardest challenges for uh, creating the portals? Let's see. Well, one of the generally in in games doing you know doing basically needing to build like mmo technology behind the scenes like uh world of warcraft level level scaling so luckily we with kind of an nft launch we can kind of scale as as the user base grows um but that was definitely one of the one of the harder things to solve for behind the scenes where most of the multiplayer tech that you see in games maybe supports 20 people in a match um and then there's the bigger kind of triple a games that are out there that do you know uh 80 people something like that like in in you know some of the battle battlefield games and that sort of thing um so when we were building this out and again density is really the the core thing um and we were looking at uh how our initial remember i was talking about kind of the b2b strategy being able to do conferences where you would have hundreds of people in one one space we had to look at um technology solutions that would allow for that uh and then you know it would come together and also be useful when we were kind of fully on that b2b strategy that same tech would be super useful for doing a dense uh, you know metaverse uh with with kind of a dense city so um we can support like yeah 400 people is what we've stress tested it to nice. in in just you know in a small area so that's something that that definitely had a lot of uh a lot of work behind the scenes where we're using you know different multiplayer tech initially and had to kind of get that and and start with something that could scale to to that many people in one one area so um that that's probably the thing that that jumps out the most yeah and i definitely think like you you'd need to upscale that like if grape or another nft community wants to do an ama or like their meeting in uh one of their portal rooms it'll be like a thousand or imagine if uh dgen apes hold something in one of your portal rooms that, that's a lot of people coming in to see that or like even a fab punk or, or like a normal totally punk anyway. totally um, totally. Cool. Yeah. So, so that's been one of some of the hardest stuff. What's actually been super easy for you? What What have you thought would be difficult? Was it like the business side of things or securing a VC investor? Has that been uh, easy for you? Uh, let's see. What has been easy? I guess actually that probably would be the easiest thing. <laughs> that was kind of you know surprising. I did know that um, you know the space is obviously very hot right now. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, I would say we were definitely surprised by uh, right after submitting to the hackathon, and, and yeah, it's just floodgates kind of opened yeah, with with they, uh, with investors reaching out. They see the product you're building and what it uh, could actually turn into. Uh, I wonder, has anything been made public yet? Is there anything announced or not yet? Uh, nothing announced yet. Okay, cool, but, cool, cool. Uh, but it's good. To, yeah. It's good. It's good to know that you at least have some VC investors that, that's coming on board. And, you know, can help you guys scale to the vision that you're trying to describe here. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And someone's in the chat just asking if there's any tips for the bronze key ha uh, hunt. You want to? You want to give any tips? Are there tips allowed? And, um, people were asking if you need coding skills. Uh, the answer to that is no. It might help a little bit if you if you are familiar with terminals. Uh, that's about that's about all I'll say. 
Oh, cool. So like uh, CMD terminals, do I need to be able to know anything ab about typing into the terminal or just how to access it? Uh, uh, maybe. Ah, that, that doesn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a yes or a no. Yeah, yeah. All right, all good, all good. Um, sure. So uh, we've actually now reached the 43 minute mark, which is, you know, you're having a good conversation. Time flies. Um, I will start thinking about wrapping up soon in the next 10 or so minutes, everyone. So if you do have any more questions, put it in the live questions chat. Um, so let's talk about a, a bit of Solana. What um, what are your thoughts currently of Solana over Ethereum, over as a blockchain in general? Uh, I, I personally think NFTs are starting to slow down a bit because we've had, you know, a high increase, but now market is kind of slowed down people want to get out of illiquid assets what what do you what do you think about solana at the moment uh i mean it's been it's been pretty awesome getting into you know really just diving into solana recently it's really only been about a month since we uh you know submitted and um awesome awesome communities everywhere we go you know you hear about um I guess any hesitancy from people kind of in the web two world about crypto. And I was, I think I was seeing a tweet today about somebody that was saying, you know, they don't know anybody who's kind of gotten into this space and regretted it. And I can as definitely in, say, as you in know, the crypto as, space or like the Solana as, space as I guess in the, they were, they were going to be in general web three, but I think specifically the Solana space, they're, they're in the Solana community, the person that said it. Yep. Um, and it's definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely something that we're seeing and it th is true that, you know, the communities are amazing, uh, you know, tons of collaborations, tons of partnerships, and it's, it's been, it's been amazing. Yeah. So absolutely the best thing we could have done and there's no going back. <laughs> yeah. So same for me. Like once I discovered Solana, I'm a retail guy. If people don't know, like, uh, I can't transact on Ethereum because gas fees will just kill me. I can't do anything. Uh, it's much easier for me to experience the, the DeFi and kind of the decentralized nature of finance on Solana. So that's why I, I like it a lot myself. But that's totally, interesting. Yeah. Um, what about uh, your team as well? What's it, what's it like uh, with your team in Solana? Are they happy to still be building uh, on Solana? I assume they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody is blown away by by the response and how how helpful the communities have been and yeah it's just it's been awesome it's super super exciting i think anybody that is in you know the more traditional web 2 development space um you know there's it's just yeah it's 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 extremely exciting compared to uh, you know web 2 which maybe has gotten a little bit boring it's just yeah, yeah it's a completely a whole new world and it's awesome. Yeah, Downside is it's very true that crypto is twenty four seven, and it's insanity. And uh, in terms of you know, you're not you're going to probably be losing sleep if you have a if you have a project that you're trying to get off the ground. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm having time. I'm having trouble organizing my schedules. Even um, well, that's cool. We do have a question as well, uh, Maynard, in the chat. He says, uh, uh, "How'd you come up with such a great idea?" First off, I think we d did cover it a little bit first. And will it be in VR? Are you guys thinking of a either AR or VR integration later on down the line? Yeah, it's definitely definitely a, a possibility. We are for sure focused on on browsers first. Uh, yeah. But, but as we, as we kind of like really get, you know, our build tools to be better and better and become more and more of an open platform that anybody can use, you know, there's going to be, you know, you want to add that, that capability and that flexibility to the platform. So it's definitely something we are considering we'll for the long yeah, term. Sure. The core product first, we get to building the infrastructure first and then other people can come and create their own rooms, you know, then go to VR. That's awesome. Definitely. Um, cool, man. So uh, we'll think about wrapping up. Uh, if there's any more, if there's no more questions, um, we usually end the interview with uh, any advice that you would have for someone in or outside of crypto. So for me, you know, go for a walk or uh, don't check your portfolio every day. I don't even know how Bitcoin is doing at the moment. Uh, it might be up or down. I have no idea. I haven't checked. Uh, any advice that you have for anyone listening? Uh, no, I don't. When when you were asking me that question, I was like, we're still so new to to the whole crypto scene, like really diving into it in this way that uh, I think we're the ones that need the the advice about how to uh, how to unplug every now and then because yeah, it's been it's been pretty pretty crazy. 
Oh, no, no, I think that's advice in itself, isn't it? You got to learn how to unplug from the entire like ecosystem, sure, yeah. system. Turn off your phone. Go for a walk. Spend time with your loved ones. That's like I think people are, are under under um, don't really appreciate this. Um, like we're we're always uh, attached to our phones all the time. We're always looking. We're always interacting with the web or, or with uh, you know web 2.0 or soon 3.0. Uh, and it, it might be super difficult when you build a nice portal room for me, and I'm able to to visit my friends and do my escape room. It might be very difficult to unplug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of uh, we want to keep shipping and making sure that we're we're moving as quickly as possible so it's it's hard to say oh I'll just uh i'm not sure which weekend i'll be able to take off maybe maybe in a few months but uh, <laughs> that's what's looking like right now uh, that sucks that sucks <laughs> all right but, so- but the good thing is is it's you know we're definitely building the thing that really really we really really cared about you know it was we basically took a step back and said you know what's a project that we'd be excited to work on every day and so almost all the time even though it's now 24 7 it's it's fun it's super super fun so that's uh that's the good side of it and i think that's a distinction that most people don't realize if you actually love doing something it doesn't feel that much like it's work and you don't mind doing it so so, so it's really good that you guys have found something that you actually love would love to build and produce and be a part of Um, absolutely yeah, so, so that's about it, guys. Uh, we'll end the interview here. Uh, this has been the Metaverse Explorer. We've been talking to Gomez, for uh, uh, the core founder, the uh, uh, co-founder, actually, of the Portals uh, platform. So uh, if you didn't know, I'm going to leave all the links for you down below. Portals is a new Metaverse that's being built on Solana, where you will be able to create your own experiences in your own room and have people c- come and join you. Uh, I'm, I think I might do like a Metaverse Explorer kind of puzzle room, find my NFT tea you win it and then you know you get to have a private conversation with me man i got a big head (laughs) it's not gonna happen (laughs) um yeah so uh that's been uh gomez uh thank you very much for joining us gomez uh any last words thank you so much no uh just appreciate everybody listening and uh see you in the metaverse i guess yeah we'll see you guys in the metaverse thank you very much for watching uh metaverse explorer see you later in the next interview ama ciao guys bye